Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is brought to you by the Friends in Recovery Community, a thriving network of individuals who are fighting back against the stigma of addiction. Join our hosts as they speak up about the real issues of addiction, treatment, and recovery. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, here are your friends in recovery. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Friends in Recovery podcast. I'm your host, Jersey Ed. That's me. Along with my two co-hosts, Buckeye Bambi and Super... Oh, no, not Super Beth. It is Basement Beth. Now, I got to take that out of there. Hey, who made this copy for me? Where's our intern? Can we fire them? Where is that? Where are, oh, we don't have one. <laughs> so it must have been me, guys. <laughs> so it's Basement Beth now, guys. We officially, last week, had it all turned over to Basement Beth with the Black Hearts. That's it. That's what Beth is this week from now on. So um, hello, ladies. That's what it says in here. It says hello. 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 <laughs> What's up, Cole? How, how are you over there? <laughs> um, has everybody been good? Bambi, were you here last week or yeah, you were here yes. last week, correct? It was the week before we missed you. Mm-hmm. So yes. it's uh it's it was um it was it was nice to have her back, right, Beth? Oh my god, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> no Bambi to say that. Just That's something it. shit's gonna go wrong. That's <laughs> it, exactly. <laughs> you die without um, Bambi. We would, we would just, a, just a, a reminder, ladies, it's higher power inspiration month. I'm not sure if I said that or not, but that is going to be the topic of the day um, of the show. So that's, uh, that's what we're going to do today. But our guest this week is uh, Cole. She's a person in long-term recovery. She'll be with us momentarily, but she'll, she'll be with us here, here and there kind of going back and forth uh, talking to us. So stay tuned for some amazing recovery. Um, Bambi, did you ask how they can get a hold of us? Or Beth, did somebody ask that? How do people get a hold of us? Oh, all our listeners can get a hold of us. Thank you, Beth. I knew somebody You're asked. Welcome. I thought I heard that. Um, <laughs> our podcast hotline, which is at a non-emergency number, it's 800-989-6504. Or email us at help at friendsandrecoverypodcast.com. And our website is friendsinrecoverycommunity.org. You can see all our emails below us right here if you want to email us individually. Also, podcast intern. I'm serious about that, guys. See, if we had a podcast intern, it wouldn't say Super Beth on my copy this week, right? It would say Basement Basement Beth, Beth, right? That's what it would say. So um, if you are interested in doing some um, service work, Please email us at um, e- Bambi would be the best person to email because she's been taking what thousands of applications for this or, or I, hundreds of thousands. I, it takes me hours a week to go through them all. I know it's insane. It's just, you know, then we have to have a meeting and then we have to whittle it down and we get more in we have to whittle it down. So I think there's about 10,000 people that we're, we're down to right now. Right, Bambi? Uh, about. Okay, good, good. All right. Cole's like, really? No, mm-hmm. really not, Cole. <laughs> anyway, so We've email been begging us. for a long time, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's getting to be, we're begging now. We're not even asking. We're, please, somebody be our podcast intern. Um, or we're going to have to just turn Beth into our podcast intern. That's, oh, that's, that's bad. Have to that's a bad plan. <laughs> you might have to come out of the basement for that, though. That's right. You might have to, Beth. <laughs> not going to work. <laughs> oh God. All right. So just, um, you know, just kind of, uh, email, uh, Bambi on that one in our hearts, guys, you can see Beth has her new black heart. There it is guys. Let's give some Beth, some black love, uh, black heart love. Well, <laughs> black heart. <laughs> love. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to hell. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way, guys. <laughs> I am the nicest and <laughs> Call cut that out, please. <laughs> See, Beth, it's you. It's you that makes us go down these roads. It is. It's always me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get move on to that and and Bambi, of course, purple hearts like she always gets. You know, just uh, give us some love. I know there's too many purple hearts. I'm many purple hearts, people. It, it is. It is purple hearts. No, it's too much. It's too much. I wrote a letter to Congress banding the color purple. So we're going to see what happens. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's just another movie she said wrong. That's the best movie ever. 
<laughs> oh my god and then of course jersey ed uh blue hearts and cole our guest red hearts let's see if carl okay. puts a heart up there and see what happens but red hearts for Cole. and i'm going to take a minute here to stop okay so the last three weeks in a row um every one of our guests picked one of our colors and we said pick another color and nope. Cole, you finalized the decision because you picked the red heart after you picked one of our colors. So I think the guess from now on will be a red heart because that's what that's a go to is. You Seems know what I mean? To so be the, uh, the the hot color. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Blue was the color I picked. It was. It and was. You didn't give it to me, so I had to mm, take red. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Don't worry. The blue hearts. I don't get them anyway. So if we use a red. You might get. You might get them. So <laughs> um, let's see where are we. I like to thank um, all the donors who make this show possible. And don't forget, Friends and Recovery Podcast is part of the Fire Network. For more information on both, go to our our website, friendsandrecoverycommunity.org, and click on. Um, whatever is there that you want to look at um, to make a donation or to see the fire, what the fire network is about. Sober shout outs, guys, here it is. I don't know if anybody has any Cole. I'm going to start with you with a sober shout out. Would you happen to have a sober shout out for anything or anybody? You know, it could be I, for a thing, right? It could be for um, a thing. Good friend, Jim, um, <laughs> Jim, who's celebrating 10 years today. And um, so I want to give a shout out to Jim G. Jim. Also, when I was at the meeting last night with y'all, there was a woman who had 77 days. Don't know her name, but I wanted to say praise to her. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes, that's yeah. I remember her 77 days. Good, good for her. Yeah, that's great when we hear that stuff on those meetings. So um, Bambi or Beth, any sober shout outs? No, no, no. Just how about a, a sober shout out to all those who are struggling or just coming back mm -hmm. into the rooms? That's right. For people with one day or whatever it is, or, how about or a you, you know what, you know what we need to do? We need to do a <clears throat> shout out for Carl. Ooh, Carl who? Carl from Sober Pod. <laughs> Carl from Sober Pod. Well, we always do a shout out for Carl from Sober Pod. <laughs> yeah, but he needs, a, he needs a special shout out. People we'll give him a little to love today. Bambi, what do you think? People need to I, go see his show. I do. I think we need to put a challenge in place to help Carl out. I'm not going like to so. help, but um, <laughs> I think we'll for get, our, get our get our viewers and listeners over to his podcast. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So how about we throw out a challenge, guys? Let's oh, do it. So anyone challenge. who watches our show clear through the end and goes over to sober pod watches an episode and then makes a comment about mm. both shows and our in the comments on youtube or in the comments on one of our um, podcast media platforms mm -hmm. we will send one of our lovely do you have one recovery i do let me just reach hold it on here. she's gonna go get our lovely this is this is like big time it is big time we don't get these away I have 15 more to go. No, actually, 15. I have 25 more to go. Yeah, but you could do five meetings, though. Don't forget. I know. <laughs> All right. So, Here it is. Oh, Let's our see it. Lovely Prince and Recovery coin. It's there it mint. is. It's beautiful. Ooh, uh, it has the Serenity uh, Prayer on the back. Look at that. So it's a nice one. metal coin. Yeah. And um, so how about the first? How about the first five people? Yeah. The first make five people. That, that make a comment, watch one of his shows, make a comment on his show, make a comment on our show. Yeah. First five people are going to get a friends in recovery coin. Yes. Right. There you go. So that's it. So that's the challenge, guys. Go listen to Silver Pot. And you know what? You're going to be surprised. It's a great show. It really it is. is. Um, it's one of my go to shows. If Friends of Recovery wasn't on, I would definitely like Silver Pod first, but Friends of Recovery is on. So I got to like it. So <laughs> anyway, so that's our challenge. Uh, Carl and Chelsea, we love you. You guys do an amazing job over there um, at Sober Pod. Um, he has a website. Check it all out. I mean, you know, really give Carl some love uh, because it's an amazing show. And and he's uh, he's he's a really good friend of ours. So um, thank you, Carl and Chelsea, for everything you do over there. Quick meeting update. Don't forget, we have twice daily A meetings on Zoom. You can find them again at our website, friendsandrecoverycommunity.org. Look for us on all of our social media under Friends and Recovery Communities. Don't forget to um, like, subscribe, share, and give us a five-star review and comments too, right? Yeah, and turn the notification bells on. Notification bell, yes. Turn it on. Ding, right? It calls right. that little pull, push over and ding. So, all right, guys. So we made that pretty quick. That wasn't too bad. I mean, we didn't, well you know. Done. 
Yeah, no. Good, five good, years, good. you're getting better at it, Ed. Five years, yes. I'm finally mastering this <laughs> stuff. So, well, ladies, it is time for question, question of the week. Question of the week. Here it is. Question of the week. There, uh, it's uh, all that smoke and mirrors there going on. And the question of the week is: What are your three most important values in life right now? Your three most important values in life right this very moment, because things change every once in a while, different, you know, different life things come up. But where you're at in life right now, what is your three most important values? And we and we uh, we get, want, want to have you guys on Facebook give us some uh, some feedback on that, too, what your three important values are. And we're going to start with our guest, Cole. What's your three most important values in life right this very moment? Right now, my three important values, um, I think for myself, it's integrity, honesty, and my mental health slash mm, health. Love it. Um, yeah. And integrity, without integrity, I can't do um, and be who God wants me to be. Because um, mm-hmm. once I lose the integrity, I start going down a road that I shouldn't be. Um, honesty to me is the three steps, first three steps of um how the program works, honesty, open-minded, and willingness. Mm-hmm. And my mental health is um, huge, keeping that in check, um, mm-hmm. keeping my mental health and my physical health in check, which kind mm-hmm. of goes in hand because if I'm not taking care of the physical, the mental can start. So I think those would be my most three important values um, that I look at for myself today. Mm-hmm. Outside of that, always number one for me would be um, my most important thing in this whole world is um, God. Um, mm-hmm. Him, I am nothing and <laughs> sobriety. So yeah. I don't think those fall under values or it's just maybe my lifestyle. So that's absolutely would be- good. Yeah. Good. So integrity, honesty, mental health slash health. Okay. Beth, what do you got for your I, three I, most important? You know, I, I know I had a different answer and I love what Cole said. Mm-hmm. Um, my can integ- you, hear? <laughs> you can steal her, her stuff. So, <laughs> she uh, didn't copyright integrity- it yet. <laughs> You know, I think one of the things that of lifetime has always been my integrity. Mm-hmm. Um, and then forgiveness. Forgiveness. Um, and I also, you know, with everything that's been going on with my foot, my mental health. Mm-hmm. I've been that's huge right now for me. And I'm I'm doing better and I'm taking care of myself. I have like 150 seedlings off to my left, and I have my sewing machine and my quilting up here in the dining room to my right. And basement you're not in your dining room you're in your basement i know right i wish i was in my basement i miss my basement but i can't get there it's been four weeks since i've been in my basement <laughs> oh so, my god all right so we have um integrity forgiveness and mental health yeah. i like the mental health one i'm i'm like i'm, I'm definitely kind of understanding that piece you know i definitely understand that piece so um bambi how about you well, I could mimic the 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 girls and because I feel that those are real important, but honesty has to be number one. I have to be honest with myself. I have to be honest with others. Um, most importantly, I have to be honest with myself because mm-hmm. I have nothing if I can't be honest with myself. Um, faith, faith would be mm-hmm. number two. I, you know, um, in my higher power, which I call God and, um, you know, I lacked that for a long time. And um, so now without that guiding every aspect of my life, I just, I, I wouldn't have anything. And mm-hmm. um, trust, I think also, Ooh. you know, I have to trust, um, I have to trust this, the, the process of this program to stay sober. And I have to, you know, I have to learn to trust others and trust mm-hmm. myself again. Yeah. So yeah. I love that trust, faith and honesty. So we have uh Cole with integrity, honesty, mental health and health. Ba- Beth with um integrity, forgiveness and mental health. Bambi, honesty, faith and trust. I love it. There's a like it there's kind of a common theme but we also go off on our you know we also go off on our own there a how little about, too. How about you, Ed? Oh, that's right. For, I, I forgot know. about me. <laughs> so my three things are faith loyalty and integrity mm. um i have to put my faith first um because i you know i, I can't I, if, if i don't put my faith first i won't have my sobriety i won't have anything in my life you know and that is really really important to me because i don't 
I don't guide myself through life. It's not me. You know what I mean? And uh, the stupid stuff, maybe I take my will back, but <laughs> but it's the faith that keeps me going and keep me growing. So the loyalty, um, I am just a total 100% loyal person. That's hands down. Um, when you become a friend of mine and, and you, you, you and I kind of click, that's it, man, we're loyal, but don't cross me though. Don't, don't, don't mistake loyalty. Um, right. right? The worst nightmare. And the good thing that's so cool is you get to pick. That's right. That's right. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. So loyalty and integrity, integrity, just. Um, I think that's, I think that was a common thread between us all, right? Yeah. Um, Integrity, because I know for me, when I was out there, there was no integrity, man. I just did what I had to do, ripped through you. I didn't care what, who you were, what you did. If I wanted something from you, whatever it was, I was going to get it for you. And there was no, no integrity. So I feel honored to have integrity today. I really do. And that's one thing I will not give up is um is my integrity today so so great answers guys uh facebook uh tony tony h says uh, he loves the mental health aspect so do i tony i love um the mental health piece because if we're not taking care of our mental health we know i mean ladies uh, you know isn't it a little bit different now let's say uh cole you've been around for a while beth you've been around for a while and bam you probably even noticed like let's take mental health 10 15 years ago it's completely different than what it is today right oh yeah i mean you know, it's, it's, it's accepted, you know, it's, you're not going to the loony bin anymore. It's not the, not the psych unit. It's more of the behavioral health. They're making it more comfortable. Um, and you know, the, the, the mental health, I think drives a lot of our beat. Well, it, it does drive a lot of our behaviors and now medications and, and everything is a little bit more acceptable. I mean, we were just talking on a meeting this morning, somebody was talking about medications, you know, and um, I think that's great to hear that in an AA meeting. One other yeah. person was saying, you know, when I was, when in the old times, when I was talking about medications, the, 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 the old timers right. didn't want to hear it. Right. Oh my God. When SSRIs came on the scene, mm-hmm. like AA was like, you're not so, I remember the whole thing in the nineties, mm-hmm. like, it was insane. It's insane. And listen, the same thing happened when MAT came out. You know, mm. you're not sober. If you get Vivitrol, you're not sober. If you're on right. Suboxone, you're not sober. If you're, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but, but, you know, but back to the mental health, I got to tell you, COVID was the best thing that mm-hmm. happened oh, yeah. to the stigma of mental health. I agree. I think a hundred percent. I mean, working in the behavioral health field, watching this past three years which by the way guys we are officially three years in yes um this past week was the three-year mark that that jersey got shut down Mm -hmm. Um, 14th 15th 13th whatever um i think that (laughs) this is so funny i think that people being forced to stay in their homes with the people they live with like back them into a mental health corner. Like, you couldn't run away from it anymore. That is true. That is true. <laughs> um, and, you know, <clears throat> and being in the treatment field for both SUD and mental health, um, you know, during the, the pandemic, you could not get a spot in an eating disorder facility. Mm. In the country, there was a waiting list throughout the entire country. Um, kids, adults, divorce mental health, like everything, just it literally. And now it's like we hit that paradigm shift. And now mm-hmm. all of a sudden mental health is being taken much more seriously. Mm-hmm. Without yeah. the stigma. 100%. And, um, and that brings me to our guest Cole, because she does a lot with mental health. She does a lot in the community, a lot with um, the, the first responders um, and Cole, welcome to the show. Thank you for being a guest. And uh yeah, we're, we're we're proud to have you here. And since we're on this topic of mental health, um, you see a lot of it, I'm sure, because of the position that you're in, and and you know what what goes on. So let's let's keep this conversation going, if you don't mind. So <clears throat> mental health, um, definitely the number of suicides, the number of um, suicides in adolescents, the number of divorce since COVID mm-hmm. have gone through the roof. Like it has mm-hmm. been crazy. Um, working at um, my place of work, <laughs> I, had seen, I had left for a few months and came back to that position. And it was right when everything was closed down and we were getting phone call after phone call in regards to SI and, and what's going on. 
And I went to um, my boss and I said, we need to open up the police department every Wednesday, um, 10 to 12 and have a mental health to be able to walk in because mm -hmm. there were individuals that were in line at, at a hospital for 56 hours, not even being seen. And I just said, let's just open it on Wednesdays, mental health only, no, S, no substance misuse. I just want mental health. And um, we brought in two clinicians uh, pro bono for us to wow. assessments while they were there and to also run groups. And wow. um, the first day I opened the door, 31 people showed up. And oh I my said, God. That's amazing. Wow. And like, and I, and I, all I kept on saying was I can't promise that I can get you into a bed, but I can promise you, I'm going to see you every Wednesday mm -hmm. and just come back and check in, even if you don't want to talk. And it was, um, I ran it for nine weeks and it was absolutely amazing. It was amazing mm -hmm. um, that these two individuals uh, gave up their time. Part of their organization is that they had to tithe like 10% of their time and they chose me wow. and or we chose each other. God chose it all. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> just to see the transformation of individuals that came through and also like there was no stigma to it. Like it was like, we're all here and, it, and mm -hmm. it's okay, you know? And, um, and then it also, like, I never talked about my mental health, mm. um, never opened up about it. Nope. You know, if anyone only knows me as sober. They don't know me as a su suicide survivor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and I talk about it um, mm -hmm. because you just didn't, you know, and uh, Beth, you had brought up when the SSRIs came in, I was, um, I got sober in 87. So I was around that time when they started to come in and, and I was depressed and I had to give whatever the medication was back then. My sponsor's like, just don't let anyone know you're on. <laughs> yeah. And Keep it like, quiet. <laughs> and at this point, like I'm so desperate to stay sober. <laughs> if you tell me like uh, crawl on my hands and bark like a dog, I'm gonna bark. So now I'm not gonna tell anyone I'm taking this pill for my mental health. You know? <laughs> and now it's just so different. We just bring so much attention to it and mm -hmm. um and we have to. We yeah. have to the Quaker and the Shakers. Um, mm -hmm. I um, part of and Mary Mac Valley Prevention and Substance Abuse Project. I am their president, which is a 501c3. Mm -hmm. Here I'm doing a whole series called Change Your Brain, Your Body Will Follow. Because I wanted to take Love the focus it. on people's addiction and focusing on the addiction and starting to work on can we just look at your brain and the and actually what's going on. So our first um meeting that we had this year was I'm not sure if you folks are familiar with the amen clinic, Dr. Daniel, amen. Mm -hmm. um, he focuses on healing the brain through um, well, he does the scanning of it and then they'll tell you this type of vitamin, this type oh, of, wow. so um, that was our first event, which was absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. And cool. then Before you go any further on this, just tell everybody where you're at and, and all that. So they have an idea where all this is taking place also. <laughs> where I'm sitting, like what? No, no, not where you're sitting, not your home address, but, <laughs> but where all this is taking <laughs> place. <laughs> so I am in Methuen, Massachusetts. And, um, oh, wow. Mary Mac Valley Prevention and Substance Abuse Project. We cover Methuen, Andover, North Andover, Lawrence, and Haverhill. And we are all about prevention and education in regards to um, typically like to focus on adolescents so that they don't have to grow up and become me. Mm -hmm. Not that I became a bad person, but I went through a lot as an adolescent. Um, mm -hmm. Drinking vanilla at age seven, for example, wasn't normal. Um, <laughs> for so, me, it was. For all of us on here, it was. <laughs> so, what are you talking about, guys? <laughs> yeah. So, 10 years ago, because we're coming on our 10th year anniversary, okay. um, Senator DeZoglio from Massachusetts, she approached a group of individuals from the community to say, overdoses are like, like, they're happening like maybe like once a, like a month and think mm -hmm. of it now, right? Like we have yeah. 10, 20 a day. Yeah. So a group of um, people got together and that was uh, Phil Leahy, um, Dean Bruder. There was maybe 20 of them from Methuen. And at this point I wasn't back in Methuen. I was born and raised in Methuen. I hit my bottom in Methuen. And when I got sober, I moved to the seacoast and, um, 
So, but I always had the connection because I worked at a psychiatric facility in Hampstead, New Hampshire, which wasn't far. I worked there for 14 years. So Edwin and Methuen knew me plus my length of sobriety um, and being a circuit speaker and stuff like that. So um, where am I going with this? <laughs> I keep going. <laughs> mental health, bring it yeah, back around to your mental health. That <laughs> started um, by a group of people who are Quakers and Shakers to say we need to do something. And I have been um, a part of them for at least six years and their president for four. Because mm -hmm. um, Phil Leahy, um, Ed, you met mm -hmm. him. Yep. He's my mentor. He is, um, he's everything to me. He and his wife had helped me through some of the most difficult times of my sober life. Um, so I mentored under him for about a year and a half before I took over. And then I also took over his show, which is the empty chair mm -hmm. um, was a, it was on the TV first and then we moved it to radio station. So, um, and then I was getting burnt out cause we ran it twice a month. So I do one show and he does one show and it's just so much easier. So mm -hmm. if you guys have to, to want to jump on, I'd love to have you down there. Yeah. So, um, that's a little bit about, the um, Merrimack Valley Prevention and Substance Abuse. So again, being a Quaker and a shaker, um, I think outside of the box, um, people get annoyed with me, Beth. I know you brought up Suboxone and Methadone and they're not considered sober. I don't judge anyone's sobriety, mm -hmm. whether they take it or not, yeah. but I do judge the fact that there's other options that you're not aware of. Mm -hmm. So my next group that's coming in to do a series, we're doing it on neurofeedback, biofeedback, alpha stem and yoga. So that's going, I'm going to have a workshop on that because in, I'm even quakering and shaking for myself, not <laughs> attached to MVP ASAP because then my board is not supporting my decision, but I've been doing research on ibogaine um, mushrooms for at least a year and a half. Not that I would do it, but there's got to be other ways. There's got to be yeah. other other than Suboxone and Methadone and Chop Chop, because to mm -hmm. me, the money market, the government wants you all on it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you off. I'm actually going to give you a free phone if you stay on it. Like, go on. <laughs> <laughs> People need to know, like, there's another way of yeah. living. And, yeah. and being abstinent, I am fully abstinent. I did mm -hmm. not do anything in 1987. I remember being in the detox and they were trying to give me Librium. Um, I think it's Librium. <laughs> Is that what they give yeah. you? Yeah, Librium. Yeah. No, I need to go through this experience because that's what's going to keep me sober. Like, yeah. I need to be scared. Like, don't make this easy for me, yeah. you know. I'm 20 yeah. years old and, yeah. um, you know, 13 to 16 was fun. 16 to 20 was a shit show, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I just I just open up different venues, different ways so that it's just not A or B. Do you want some boxing or methods? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. or how about this or how about therapy or how about mm -hmm. nothing <laughs> yeah well let's get let's get back to the, some of that stuff you were talking about cole and um you know i know each one of us on here are abstinence based that's what we are but we're also um innovative thinkers and okay with people who where, where they're at we have to meet people where they're at and you know all that um, stuff as far as, you know, the, the, the hallucinogenics and stuff, there are companies out there now. There are, there are doctor's offices that do Higher this. Practices. Controlled, yeah. Yeah. That, that do this controlled. Um, and they say it works again. I know I wouldn't do it. And obviously Cole and, and, you know, she, and, and you know, but if, you know, my recovery is in Cole's recovery, you know, Beth's recovery is in Bambi's recovery and, and all that stuff. So <laughs> who am I to say, that you shouldn't be doing this, right? Who, who am I to say that? I mean, this is what worked for me. Take what you want yeah. and just go about it. And now um, I understand the fine line of we can abuse it. We can fall back into it. We can. Yeah. So that's why I choose to stay abstinent. But um, but some people can't. And, and I think um, MAT is a great bridge for as long as it's done, right? A great bridge from that treatment center or whatever that first days of recovery into a solid recovery foundation, you know, eventually kind of get off of it, but, but we don't want right. them falling through that black hole and, and ultimately dying because that's usually right. what happens if we, if they don't, even when they go back out, especially nowadays. So. We were the first hospital that introduced Suboxone as a five day <clears throat> taper. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what it was supposed to be used for a five day tape. Yeah. Yeah. And saw that the revolving door had started to slow down because of it. And then obviously whatever happens with 
pharmaceuticals and the government. I won't go there. It just <laughs> like it well, I'm, I'm on board with you. <laughs> like it, 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 it for something, and um, and once again, we see what it can do. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, so they all talk about, oh, you know, it works, MAT, and and then I'm at this huge convention, and they're talking about, you know, 109 um, overdose deaths last year in. Um, and I forget how many Massachusetts had, I should have wrote it down, but I questioned and they're like, oh, but you know, and they're still portion suboxone and methadone. Yes, yes, yes. So I raised my hand and here it comes. Everyone's going to hate me. <laughs> and I think of those overdose deaths, how many people were on methadone and suboxone and you could hear a pin drop. Mm. They, they want to say it because why? Mm, Cause people relapse on that stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and if you think about it, there's sublocate, right? So sublocate yeah. is a safe form of suboxone. Yeah. You get mm-hmm. it once a month. You yep. can't find a provider. No, you cannot find a provider in New Jersey. I'm here in New Jersey. You yeah. cannot find a provider that's taking patients right now because they're limiting the license because it's gonna like be, like uh, uh, Cole works. said. Yeah, because it works. Number one, number two, it's gonna be these methadone clinics and all the suboxone. It's all gonna start going gonna towards this. If everybody yeah, went exactly. on sublocate, so, they'd be yeah. getting the benefits of MAT. <laughs> they couldn't abuse it. They can't mm-hmm. relapse on it. Yeah. Well, relapse on it, but yeah. they can't. They can't relapse with it. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden, I can't find a, a sublocate fucking provider. Of course not. Of course not. Because it's it, it, like you said. Because it works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the conspiracy, I was a conspiracy show. Conspiracy this past year. I I exactly. I know. I agree. Cole, I want to get into a little bit. Um. You know. Now. Now we know what you do, and and um. You know. Uh. I, you and I've been friends for a, a long time now, and uh. One of my most meaningful friendships with you and with somebody up in Massachusetts when I met you was, you know, it was more of a spiritual connection with you, more of a God connection. You know, you know, the pod father, he's a great friend of yours. Him and I connected through cigars and recovery and and everybody knows uh, Sweet. Him and I connected through the podcast. But Cole, you were one of and, and everybody else who I work with or, you know, connected through the, the program or whatever. Um, and um, and, you know, referring back and forth, helping each other out. But I really connected you with you spiritually when we met. And that was really important because I have to tell you, you were definitely part of my spiritual journey. I think God put you in my life to be where I'm at today. Um, and the other thing, guys, when you live in Charleston, you have to be uh, spiritual down here. So, so I think God knew what he was doing. <laughs> but no, you know, and that piece of everything is when I see you, when you come out of a meeting, um, you know, I just I just get that connection with you. And then one other thing, when we walked through um, a sober living home that you took me through, it was an old convent. And I think that's when I realized that everything that that was put together was put together right then and there. I'm like, yeah, this is... This is a reason why I'm here. This is a reason why Cole um, came across my path in my life and to to bump my spiritual and my 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 faith up more than what it was, you know. Um, so I want to thank you for that. But you are a woman of great faith. You are a woman that um, that wears it on her sleeve, if you don't mind me saying that. Um, but uh, but tell us a little bit about that. Have you always been like that, and why you know, and why are you like that, or what what's what's the deal with it? Was not always like that. I was blessed to be raised with strong women um, that were. However, because of my circumstances of what I went through in adolescence um, and all the way up until the age of 20, I hated God more than anything else in this world because anytime an event happened, um, like my aunt had passed away and she was my favorite aunt and I was a little girl. God took and my mom sat me down. God took your auntie home. I'm like, all right, I, the guy that you're telling me to love took my aunt home. That hurt, <laughs> you know. And then um, my boyfriend in high school dies, mm-hmm. and I'm like, no, back up. My parents get divorced, and my mom sits us down. God has different plans for us. And I'm like, mm-hmm. again, the thing that you make me talk to at night and loves me is doing nothing but hurting me. Mm-hmm. And then the final straw, which sent me into alcoholism was the death of my boyfriend. Um, mm-hmm. Robert. Um, that I went from fun party girl to suicide is let's just get out of here because I can't believe it. And the sad part is, was I wanted to go to heaven to kill God mm-hmm. so, so that no one down here would hurt anymore. Like I was going to save you folks from the him mm-hmm. and uh, 
And then fast forward coming into this program and I hear them saying and talking about God. I'm like, well, I'm screwed. <laughs> they ain't happening for me. And um, people were like, you know, we'll just, you know, pray to a higher power. I'm like, if I can't feel it, can't touch it, mm-hmm. can't see it, it ain't real. <laughs> I picked up some rocks, rocks from the beach, not white rocks, right? Rocks from the beach. And I held them in my hand. I had five of them. And my sponsor said, you know, just pray to them. Mm-hmm. You know, talk to them. Let that just be your force. And I'd be mm-hmm. like, and that's where it started. And then as I was going through um, weeks of remaining sober and seeing miracles happening around me, I started to drop a rock. Mm-hmm. And then I had four. And then I was like, all right, there's no way that that wasn't God. So God was coming so apparent in my life. And then when I sit back and I review my life and I see how many times he has placed in my life, it's overwhelming that Mm -hmm. I would ever even doubt that this force, this energy, this light, this Mm -hmm. miracle existed. I am a true example that God exists because I'm alive. Mm -hmm. I survived. I'm sober 35 years. Mm-hmm. I am. Um, I help others, but it wasn't always like that. It was a. Um, I was a pit bull. Like Our, your will, not mine, be done. But mm-hmm. because yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, come on yeah, now. Like yeah. I know better. And yeah. then when I think of everything he saved me from, mm-hmm. um, and then where he has guided me, because I will listen to what he says, you know, mm-hmm. like I could give you um, books, notebooks filled of miracles where God had used me in such great and mighty ways that I cannot deny his existence. Mm-hmm. And the most important one is I didn't drink for 24 hours. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do it on my own. I tried. Mm-hmm. I never made it past Thursday. So when I fell to my knees and I said, so help me God, if you are real, not only do you have to make me stop drinking, but you need to show me how to live. Mm. And here's my journey um, yeah. for 35 years. He's been yeah. showing me how to live. It's been yeah. um, a roller coaster ride. Again, dances of back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Well, you know, life, life is imperfect, right? Life. I mean, we, we're always going to be in a storm. We're going to be storms are coming up. We have to enjoy what we have right here. And now, um, you know, God, you know, God didn't say our lives are going to be good. You know, it's, 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 you know, when we have something to believe in and you know what, I believe in God. I believe that, you know, hopefully when I die, I'm going to go to heaven, but mm-hmm. why take, I always say, why take a chance? If, if, you know, God forbid, you know, if I'm going to be an asshole on this earth and there is really something afterwards, I'm screwed. <laughs> yep. So a, cu- a couple of good things about that is being nice and being uh, like a godly person or being a spiritual person. It, it just feels much better. You're in a better state, you know, a, a better mindset. It keeps me sober and, you know, and, and it keeps me kind of uh, in, in that realm of things, you know, of, 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 of God and, and of, of, of life and what it's supposed to be, you know? And, um, you know, the, uh, I, I read in, um, the pro- Proverbs, I want to bring this up because I always hear people say, and I'm, I'm just going to quote the Bible because I'm going to get a jump on, uh, uh, <laughs> Cole here for a minute, but, um, <laughs> uh, but there is a, um, I, there's a, a, a saying out there. I said it all the time. Uh, you know, I make plans. God laughs, right. Um, that is not entirely true. Um, I don't think God would ever laugh at me. So now I like what you were talking about, you know, earlier, you know, my early in, in Catholic church and in, in there, you know, don't bite the host. You know, if you sin, you're bad, you know, you're going to go to hell. Bob, everything was fear, 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 fear. Right. So maybe that's where that, uh, you know, God laughs at you if you if you make plans, but it's a uh, Proverbs, uh, let's see, uh, 16, um, nine, the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps, right? Amen. Establishes his steps. Mm-hmm. I, I plan, right. I plan. I have all these big, huge plans, but I don't, I don't, I don't take those steps. The, you know, God guides me through all that stuff because number one, I'm a good human being. That's what I strive for today. Number yeah. two, I do what I need to do in life, you know, and, and make sure I like all of us, we help people on here. We, we do the next right thing. And it's not necessarily guaranteed that we're going to 
be happy in life, but it makes life so much easier, you know? And it, even, even if I can believe that I know my best thinking got me here, my best thinking got me right to this moment. Right. I mean, think about that, you know, it wasn't too good. Most people don't get to where we're at um, successfully. You know, all four of us are here successfully and everybody on the, uh, on the chat, we're all here successfully. So that is not me guys. I planned, I wanted to be sober. Matter of fact, my plan was March 10th of 1994, I wanted to be sober. And March 11th of 1994, I wanted to be a millionaire, be a president of a company, drive a Bentley. And you know, that was my plan. <laughs> so what you support this that, plan. <laughs> my goal was to be dead by 18 and that didn't happen. So then yeah. I pushed up to 20 and here I am getting so sober. Yeah. You know, my yeah. friends went to college and I went to rehab. Yeah. Yeah. But here also, guys, here's wasn't in my plan either. And I'm guessing it probably wasn't in anybody's plan. And I, Bambi and I talk every day because we have to run the behind the scenes stuff for the podcast and all that. We help people. I see Bambi helping every single day. You know, those phone calls that come into her, the questions on the meeting, the emails. Bambi, my guess is you never plan to help anybody the way you do today. Correct. (laughs) <laughs> no, uh, no, I was going to be content just to drink myself to death at one point. Yeah, and that was yeah. my last, you know, plan that I made and then God took over. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Bambi, tell the story. I want I want you to tell the story because this is going to tie everything in about, and you just told it on the a, a meeting the other day um, when you got out of rehab and you needed a job. Um, and oh. yeah, I think this is God working right here. This is This is faith. This is God. This is... This is amazing for our community. So I want you to tell that story and I want I want you to everybody to understand where Friends of Recovery are because of you today. Well, I've been a nurse for 36 <laughs> years and a director of nursing for 26 of those years. And I'm licensed in 38 states. I have a compact license, but my husband lives in Illinois, and that is one of the states that is not part of the compact state. So when I moved to Illinois, I had was recently sober and just got out of um, rehab and was coming to friends in recovery regularly and um, had actually joined the podcast at that point, but um, was just the podcast and going to meetings. I was hosting a meeting and I was going crazy with nothing to do. I mean, I was out of my mind. I was thinking about, I might as well be drinking. I have no use in life or there's no purpose. I mean, I'm sitting here in a house. I'd lost my license to my second DUI and, um, I was going crazy. And there was, we used to go um, into this, to get into town, we had to pass this brand new gas station that had opened and they were advertising like crazy for help. So I'm like, I argued and argued with my husband for a week, get me an application. Let's stop and get me an application for that gas station because I have to do something. I'm going crazy in my mind. So he had actually went down that morning and got me an application. And that day Ed called and said, Hey, do you think you want to work for Friends in Recovery? I can't pay you. <laughs> but we really need you. <laughs> and, and I'm like, and it wasn't, I wasn't going to work at the gas station for a ton of money. You know, I mean, I was used to making director of nursing salary. I was going to go work for minimum wage at a gas station mm. and it changed my life. Mm. I mean, that yeah. was a the biggest God moment that I've had at this point to be Perfect. able to help others. Yeah. Perfect example. The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes steps, right? It's amazing. And, uh, you know, Cole, I'm sure we all have that that kind of, um, you know, those kind of moments in our lives that make us feel a lot better. You know, helping people, I know for me, makes me feel a lot better. And I see it with you, you know, you you and I talk on the phone about, you know, clients and helping people and all that. And, you know, and, and, you just light up when you do that. You know, I know, I, you know, I, how did you get into this? You know, how did you kind of get into this piece of, of, of recovery, you know, helping people um, get to the next step that where we were, we were blessed to get to. Um, I just think it was always in me. Like when I first got sober, um, I went back and got my high school diploma. From, you know, <laughs> um, and I went into uh, you know, I went into, um, I was a buyer for Marshall's TJX for 10 years mm-hmm. and I'd be going to meetings and everything. And, um, it just wasn't, something wasn't fulfilling me. And I was like, what is it? And that's how I started to work into the field of recovery. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
and just watching the revolving door, I always went back to every time that um, we would go to try and find a woman who was discharging from the facility to go to sober living. Like there was no sober living homes. And I remember being newly sober and not having a place to live. Like I couldn't be around my family for a year. Um, just, it was a trigger. Mm-hmm. So I had to live with my friends and my friends were doing the things that I had just left doing. And I would go to bed at night crying and um, like, please God, just get me. If you're real, you know, get me through this night. And um, without a straw up my nose or a drink in my hand. And, um, and I, I said to myself, you know, if ever, the opportunity comes for a woman sober house. I want to do this. And I was living downtown Newburyport and a group of friends of mine, we used to walk around and say, let's buy one of these Victorians. Let's just do it. (laughs) And then um, an opportunity showed there was something in our local newspaper. This is how God works, BMB. Mm -hmm. And it was talking about um, how one of our churches in Methuen was going to become a sober home. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my gosh, how cool is that? And I'm like, not for nothing. Like my last arrest or one of my last arrests was like 800 feet from that driveway. (laughs) Oh, my God. Right. And wow. um, Yeah. So I kept on driving over there and I never saw any um, any life there. And I'm like, are you sure? But, you know, my mother's like, look at this. It's in the newspaper. And then um, one day, a good friend of mine, David, he was going through a divorce and he just was constantly needy because we get needy during those times. Mm -hmm. And um, he's like, you know, I go, all right, let's go out to dinner. Let's do something because he just needs a person. And I said, David, I said, "Uh, do you know anything about Mount Carmel becoming a woman's sober home? And he goes, no, anything. Of course I do. And I'm like, well, how do you know? He's like, my best friend bought it and he's turning it into a woman's sober oh home. My I'm God. Like, Sorry, I go, I'm your best friend and I didn't buy it. I go, <laughs> Who is it? And he goes, Gary Huffnagel. I go, Huff, what? <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, I never heard of him. He's like, Well, he's not from around, he's from the North Shore. His heart was pulled to the parking lot. And um, and he started to do the paperwork to make this happen and mm. trust a long process because I won't get into because it's a long story. However, <laughs> I will get to the point where all of a sudden David and I were just not talking as much. And I had said, you know, hook me up with Gary Huffnagel and then whatever life happens. Mm-hmm. And I don't hear from David. So he's in my notebook that night. Motherfucker. <laughs> what the heck? So Sunday night, no, Monday night, I go to um, a place in Methuen. It's a Christian area. And I walk in for, it's a woman's meeting that I'm getting together to do because I'm going to leave for a weekend and I'm part of the people that are going to be speaking. And when I walk in, my friend's there and he's talking to this man and she goes, oh, cool. Come here. I want you to meet my friend because he was bringing, he was dropping off food. He had extra food. Mm-hmm. And she goes, um, Mary, this is Cole. Cole, this is Gary. And I went, Gary Huffnagel. <laughs> he lives nowhere around here. He goes, yeah. And he goes, Are you cool that everyone in Methuen needs me to meet? And I went, yes. And I, said, I need to help you open your sober house. And yeah. um, he goes, how about dinner with my family the following weekend? Um, and let's discuss this because this is my wife's project. And met with the whole family the following weekend. And by the time dinner was, um, I mean, a dessert was served, I was signing away as their program director. Oh, my they God. Didn't, they didn't know wow. how to go over home. I got them certified um, and did all their marketing and advertising. And I brought the first women in. And it was, mm. um, it was an amazing experience. And yeah. Ed, you know that that place yeah. is- since 1938, it was used for women, um, abused women, women that were alcoholic, women, teenagers that got pregnant. And we had an incident, as many places did, where our priests were abusing students. So this is one of the schools that got closed down and they merged. So these nuns that lived there, um, they were pushed out of their home. Mm. And they were sent to Canada and to Maine to go live their lives. And we invited them back for the opening ceremony and mm. these women were like 90, 89, 95. And, um, and they prayed over me and the mother who watched over this house, 
she walked us through the home and said, you know, this was Sister Margaret's house. So that room was dedicated to Sister Aww. Margaret Aww. And, and everything. And she left me her cane that's probably 150 years old now. Wow. It's gone to her, which is still in the house, hung. Um, because she told me there's wisdom here. Mm. And if you listen to the wisdom of God, these women will succeed. Mm. And um, I would need days to tell you different miracles that took place yeah, yeah. in that facility, yeah. um, but they are over the top. And again, when you hear of them, you cannot deny the presence of God because right. you could not have done the miracles that took place mm. in there. Perfect story for a higher power inspiration yeah. month. I got, I got wow. goosebumps. I do too. I, I know. Love that. I know. I know. It's, it's amazing. I mean, and, and that's, that's just some of the stories that we're blessed for. You know, I was thinking while you were talking, Cole, um, you're 35, you've been around 35 years, right? Beth, what? 31. Sober when I was one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One years old. Yes. Same thing. with. Same. Beth. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> let's think about this conversation 36 years ago, what yeah. it would look like back then. Right. I mean, none of this would exist. Not none of this. It, it would probably take place in a bar <laughs> or a crack house or, you know what I mean? It's just amazing. Like the, the how far we've come, you know, and bam, I know you've, you've, you know, you're, you're that you have a lot of wisdom too. I know, you know, you're, you don't have the the longevity that we do, but you're right in there with us. So, um, you know, cause you sponsor a lot of people there, you know, people are attracted to you um, because you have what they want. Same thing with Cole. Same thing with with Beth. Um, the 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 fir the first time I like I said the first time I met Cole, boom, instant attraction. That spiritual thing. First time I met um, uh, Beth, um, we were out to dinner or out to lunch, and oh, I'm yeah. I'm sitting there the whole time. She was sitting across the table. I got to talk to her. I got to ask her to be on a podcast. I got to be asked her about, and because we were kind of in transition, and I'm like. Yeah, she's going to make a perfect podcast host. And me and Bammy talked about it and I called her and I asked her boss. And, you know, so this is these are God moments that guys think about this. Everything that happened to each one of us and everything that the reason all four of us are here, we had to go through everything we had to go through to be here at this very moment. Good, bad, ugly, nice, whatever it is, marriages, divorces, you know, deaths. We had to go through that to all to sit here and talk about what we're talking about to help think how many people are going to help from this point on because of all four of us, it's the spiritual, the spirituality here, the, the guy, you know, the, the, the bringing together with the, you know, our, our, our higher powers and, and just, you know, and cause this isn't going to go away. This show is going to be around for a long time. You know, and people are going to be able to, you know, to talk about it. And so here we are all four of us, 36 years ago, no shape to even, say hello to our mothers, let alone fucking sit here 36 years later and fucking talk on a podcast. Let's be serious, you know? And in a hundred years from now, somebody might p p turn this on and hear your story about the, um, about the, the, the convent and the, whatchamacallit, it might help somebody a hundred years from now, you know? So it's just amazing kind of how, how everything works. Um, so we're going to, we're running out of time here. Um, I just want to close, um, Cole, can you give us just some, um, some things that work for you in your life, just a quick kind of overview. Um, what helps you get through your day to day kind of, um, you know, you, you, you know, your, your sobriety or, or what, what, you know, kind of what, what helps you, what, what kind of inspires you to stay sober during a day, you know, never leave the basics, start <clears throat> my day on my hands and knees, asking God to remove the obsession for food, drugs, sex, men and women, alcohol, anything that may harm my heart, body and soul. Mm -hmm. um, number one thing, hands on knees um, mm -hmm. and constantly um, being of use of service of God. Um, and, and that's how it works. I know for me, my length of sobriety is all due to I started therapy and I mm -hmm. was in therapy for the first 10 years of recovery. Mm -hmm. And that is the only reason why I can say that I think I sit here. So, you know, um, stay to the basics. One, two, three waltz until you're ready to jump forward. Mm -hmm. um and just join us on this beautiful happy road of destiny happy absolutely destiny. yeah, destiny. yeah. yeah. It, trudge the happy road of destiny yes trudge baby <laughs> it's not really the basics you don't have to go back to them and i That's think um, you know plus i had a bounty over my head my ex-boyfriend bet you know 50 bucks i couldn't stay sober mm. and i couldn't resent him <laughs> and i still <laughs> <laughs> and absolutely I'm 
How's that yeah. work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like what you said. If we, I think you said on a meeting or somebody said on a meeting, if we don't leave the basics, we don't have to go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. And how, how, um, like, true is that you know i mean you know and the basics is is the basics i don't have to really i don't have to put much thought into this yeah. this program is a simple program i think about it all i have to do is just show up raise my hand and just share a little bit and then it then it just kind of snowballs in there people help you out you go you it's it's very very easy you know but all those years ago, I didn't, I didn't want to try this. And like, you know, this, it's not easy. I can't do this, you know? So, um, so Cole, thank you for um, a, a wonderful show. Um, you know, I, 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 we, we hope to have you on again. I think you were on, we'll have to go look, but yeah, you said you were on when I got sick on the podcast uh, some time ago in COVID. Yeah, so you were sick with that sick that you, I don't remember why you weren't there, but I do remember um, it was during COVID and, um, and I was separated at the time. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you can find that show that Cole was on, Yep. And you the, be the first one to comment here. Bambi's going to send you a coin. Yes. It was a Saturday <laughs> night. I remember that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, well, just look back on that show. Um, Cole, thank you for the, um, you know, perfect way to end our, our inspiration month guys and, and higher power was with Cole and, and our, and our guest the week before he was wonderful too. And uh, just amazing. You know, I, when, when we said when you came up this, this um, higher power inspiration month, I'm like, do they go hand in hand? I'm thinking like, yes, they do. You know what I mean? Look at, look at the stories Cole was telling us hand in hand, higher power inspiration, because without our higher power, I don't think I can be inspired. I can't, you know, I, I can't believe that, that I would inspire myself, you know? Um, so I, you know, I, I want to thank everybody, ladies, um, Beth, the basement Beth, who we now know <laughs> that's her real name and, uh, she has black hearts, um, and Bambi and, and Beth, thank you for handling the comments in the, uh, the chat and to everybody in, um, Facebook. Thank you guys for wonderful questions and comments. So, uh, I think Beth might be our new, um, chat master. <laughs> I get too involved watching the guest. I can't keep, I, I look I down know. and I'm like, forget. So. I know, I know. So if you guys are wondering what Beth is doing, she's answering all the stuff in the, in the chat. So thanks Beth and Bambi. It's always a pleasure having you on here. Um, this show has been, um, just been just wonderful and, uh, stay sober, everybody. Thank you guys. All Have right. This concludes this episode of Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast. Follow us on Facebook for past shows and updates and enjoy free access to twice daily support meetings. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs>